bestellt. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. John the Baptist appeared preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was of him that the prophet Isaiah had spoken when he said, a voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the word of the Lord, make straight his path. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locust and wild honey. At that time, Jerusalem, all Judea, and the whole region around the Jordan were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath, produce good fruit of, as, as evidence of your repentance, and do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God can raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now, the axe lies at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I am baptizing you with water for repentance, but the one who is coming after me is mightier, mightier than I. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with the unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Four important people in this Advent time, chronologically speaking, is Prophet Isaiah. That's why we will be hearing the Prophet Isaiah in the first reading. He lived about 700 years before the historical coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The second is John the Baptist, the Virgin Mary, and obviously our Lord Jesus Christ. John the Baptist, as we all know, received a special and extraordinary and beautiful mission that we just hear in today's gospel, and that mission was to prepare the way of the Lord to tell people about the presence of Jesus in our world. He was a man who was admired for many people. Even the Pharisees and the Sadducees went to see him. And not only because of his words, but mainly because of his actions. The gospel tells us the way that he lived, what he wore, what he ate. So they saw something extraordinary in him. They saw something special in John the Baptist, that many people, even those who didn't like his words, that they accept the words of him, but they did not want to hear that, they still respect John the Baptist. Just imagine you and I meeting a person who has something special in him, in her, that you say, this person is not an ordinary person. This person has something 
that attract people. So John the Baptist had something very special. He had received the Holy Spirit since he was in the womb of his mother. And with the power of the Holy Spirit, he had the authority of preaching and saying what he was saying. But he was not preaching to condemn people. Because sometimes when we hear the gospel, we might be thinking that he was taking a break and, hey, you convert or you will go to hell. No. He was preaching, bringing people a meaning to their beliefs. Because we all know the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they had made their religion, the Jewish, something empty. Just, you have to, you have to, you have to, don't do, don't do. There was something empty. And that was happened with a religion that has lost its meaning. So what is the meaning of our religion, of our faith? The Eucharist. The Eucharist is the most sacred, it's not a thing, but it's the most important and sacred uh, thing, let us say, that we have in our church. Some Catholics, they value the gift of the Eucharist. Others, they don't. As I said before, not all Catholics believe in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. When we, when we receive the Eucharist, we receive Jesus. Receiving the Eucharist is receiving the direct access to God. The direct contact with God, with Jesus. But sometimes we take that like granted and we are not aware of such a great gift, such a sacred gift. This Eucharist is Jesus, and Jesus brings us everything that we need in our lives. So in today's Gospel, John the Baptist reminds us the importance of believing in the presence of Jesus. John the Baptist, as we all know, was the first martyr. He was the first one to give his life, to give testimony of what he believed. John the Baptist, as Jesus said, was the most important of all men born for a woman, but also the most humble man, and he was even confused for them to be the Messiah. Just imagine the way that he lived, that many people thought that he was the Messiah. And one of the 12 apostles, before being apostles, they were disciples of John the Baptist. So he was a very well-known man, a man who grew up in the desert, far from distractions, far from noises, to dedicate himself to his mission. We have heard many times that all of us have received a mission. It will be important to ask ourselves how am I pursuing my mission? How am I doing in that mission that I have received from God? Because all of us know that we are alive, that we were created, that we are in this world, because God has a mission for us. And that mission should bring us hope in what we believe. And that mission should give us courage to see if we are really paying attention to that mission. So today I want to pray to the intercession of this wonderful and extraordinary prophet, John the Baptist, that our conscience also should be open to see if we really are spending our lives pursuing our missions. Please stand.